I think we're on. Let's go. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining us today. Today we are looking at the Orbea Rise. Now I've had the Orbea Rise for well over a year and this is actually my second model, although there is no difference between the 2023 and 2024. Uh, and that's why I thought I would sit down and tell you guys a little bit more about the bike, what it's really good at, what it's not so good at, and all the things that I really, really love about it. Starting off, when you choose your Orbea Rise, using the Mayo configurator from Orbea, you can bespoke your Orbea Rise to exactly the configuration that you want and you can be pretty damn sure that no one else will choose the same as you. Reason being, there are so many possibilities on the Mayo configurator, you can change so many pieces about this bike, and that's what makes a lot of the bikes from Orbea very, very unique, that you're able to do that. So you can change the frame color on this area to the top tube color, to the decals on it, to the stickers that go on the fork, to the wheels, to the components, etc., etc. So you can really be sure that you're very, very unlikely gonna find an identical Orbea rise to yours when you're on the trail. Now that's a really cool feature to start with, but let's get straight down and dirty with the really serious stuff about this bike. So what makes it unique? Well, it's well under 20 kilograms, and that for an e-bike is pretty special, to be honest with you. Um, but the really, really fancy part about this bike is right here, where it says EP8RS. Now, I'll be honest with you, when I started riding this bike over a year ago, I saw the RS and thought, Rally Sport. I thought, oh, it's gonna be more powerful, it's gonna be even more mental. I couldn't have been more wrong. What that means is rider synergy. Now, the software that's gone into this motor and all of the engineering and the clever people that are behind it, they have come up with a package and built into the attributes of that motor to make sure that this bike is like no other. Now, what do I mean by that? So, an EP8 engine motor gives you 85 Newton meters of power. Now, the RS, Rider Synergy, that will give you 60. And you're probably wondering, hang on a minute, why are we going backwards? Well, it's not backwards, it's not detuning. What this is, is actually making the software and the power output feel completely different. Now, the way they do that, or the way that it's actually perceived as a rider when you're riding the bike, is that the more effort you put in as a rider, the more that this motor will say, I'll give you some more juice. And that's the really bespoke way that they have designed this. And I love it. From a rider's point of view, it's not an e-bike that you get on, you put into boost and you do no effort and just eat the mountain up like a motorbike. No, that's not what this bike is about. This bike is about someone like me that wants to ride bikes. I want to put in some effort. I want to actually feel like I am doing everything but then I've got a bit extra here and I can go a bit further and I have that sort of the benefit to having an e-bike. So it's kind of combining those two things together, which I really, really love. Now, don't get me wrong. I do love a full fat e-bike where I can just put it in turbo, not put any effort in and just go and have a good time. However, in terms of cycling, exercise, training, all of those things, I do want to feel like I'm doing something and this motor and this setup allows me to do that. Now, the next thing you can do to make it even more unique, which is what I did last year, I made my Orbea Rise from 2023. As I say, the, the geometry and components were exactly the same as this year. There was one change. Last year, I wanted to make it as light as possible because I was racing it a lot during the Maxi Avalanche series, which I was delighted to take the win overall. And the bike really, really helped. Now, I had less power, yes, but that was proved to not be a downfall when it comes to racing. I had less power than everyone else, and yet because of all the other pieces of the bike, it meant that I could go faster than everyone else, or maybe that's because of these things as well. I don't know. Anyway, last year I had a 360 watt hour battery in the down tube. That made the bike that little bit more light. This year, I've gone for a slightly bigger battery. I've gone for the 540. So those are the two options that you've got when you spec your Orbea Rise. Now, in terms of distance, how far you can go, I don't know. And obviously it would be an unfair comparable thing if I said, 
you can do this far on your Orbea rise because it depends what elevation you're gaining. It depends how much you weigh as well because obviously that has a huge amount to do with distance and how much your bike is gonna take you because if you are a bigger rider, it's obviously not gonna take you as far. But what I can tell you is that I can go further on my Orbea rise than I can on my Orbea wild, which has a far bigger battery. Now, I think a lot of that is to do with the ergonomics of the motor, the way that the bike handles and what it's actually about. It's about riding a bike. It's not about putting it into the highest power mode and just hammering it up a fire road. That's not what this bike is designed to do. Now, if you want to go even further, you can do that by adding one of these beauties. This is a 252 watt hour range extender, which fits very nicely into the slightly modified bottle cage holder here. So it's actually a slightly stronger one. And then you just put your cable just to the other side onto the bottom of here, which you can't see. I'll show you in a minute from a B-roll clip. Uh, where you can connect it into the motor. So that then gives you a huge amount of range, which will last you a very, very long time. Now then, suspension, what have we got? We've got two options. So you'll always have 140 mil of travel on the back, which I think is plenty. A lot of people have talked about aftermarket modifying and stuff, but if you think about it, Orbea invest millions of pounds into understanding how they want this bike to perform. And it's a bit like people that modify their cars at Halfords. Do you really think that walking into Halfords and putting some modifications on your car is gonna make it go faster? No, the car manufacturer has invested millions and millions of pounds into understanding how to get the best out of that car. It's exactly the same here. You don't need to modify the bike. Orbea, the geniuses at Orbea have designed it to work in the way that it does. So I would strongly suggest leave it as it is. So 140 mil on the back. You do have a couple of shock options. So you can have the heavier duty shock like I've got. This is a Float X factory from Fox. Um, now moving on to the front, this is where you have the two options. You can have 140 mil fork on the front or 150. Now I take the 150 just because the nature of what I do, the nature of my riding and the type of trails that I would be seen on, that actually suits me a bit better. So 150, 140, beautiful, love it. There are two materials you can have when you are specking your Orbea Rise. Now you can go in at the aluminium end of the scale and that will give you a range of different specs, a range of different options, or you can go for the Orbea OMR Carbon, which is what I've got, and that will then give you three options on specking different pieces to the bike. And you can use the Mayo configurator, which I honestly say is worth doing. Have a look at it, it's incredible. The next thing that I really love about this bike and this area here is the fact that Shimano combined with Orbea, geniuses at Orbea, I should say geniuses at Shimano as well to be fair, shouldn't I? Geniuses at Shimano, geniuses at Orbea got together and they designed an app which allows you to control a huge amount from here. Now I actually have it on my phone. This is the app. As you can see, we can change so much to do with the bike. It works really good and I am gonna say this now, but using the quad lock to lock into the bike, I can actually use that whilst I'm on the bike and fiddle around, especially while I'm training. So drive train for myself, I have selected for the Shimano XTR option. I've actually gone for the 9120 uh, brakes, which actually give you four pistons, so it's higher power, um, which again suits me because I am a heavier rider. So I weigh in just close to 90 kilos, plus my kit on top. So when I'm riding, I like to have a lot more braking force and those brakes do give it. When it comes to the drivetrain, it's XTR 51 tooth, 12 speed system, which I love. There is an option of going for the electric shifting, which will be DI2 connected with it as well. But I love the way that this works. It's very clean on the shifting. And something that really works really good is that Orbea have designed this head tube. And yes, it might be a bit of a faff when it comes to fiddling or maintaining the bike, but when it comes to actually riding it, using it, loading it in your car, actually riding it, racing it, all of the other things, this is fantastic. So all of the cables, as you can see, are really neat. They're tucked away. They actually run through 
the head tube and then disappear into the frame, never to be seen again. I love that, I really do. And obviously I work on my bikes every day, so I do know a lot about this and I understand that some people might have a bit of a frustration when it comes to the maintaining of it, but that's just me being honest. I'm telling you guys an honest review that is a downside, but that's one downside and it's got 10 upsides, which is the everyday use, using it, racing it, etc. So I love this. I would keep that every day of the week and I'd like it on all the other bikes, please. Yes, please or bear, do that. So my frame is an XL. All of my frames are XL. I will be using some large frames as well this year for the more maneuvering races where I need to tight turns and all the rest of it, maybe even some tricks. But for the majority, I ride XL. When it comes to the dropper, I have very long, lanky legs. So having a 200 mil dropper is fantastic. And as you can see in this frame, the collar for the dropper post is slammed. And I love that, I love that. What I don't like is having the collar sit up here so that when you lose the seat, it's still up high. On this bike, it's fantastic. It drops all the way down, it's out the way. Brilliant feature, love it. So whilst we're on geometry, let's talk about the angles of the dangles. So the fork is a 65 and a half degree head angle, which I think is brilliant. A lot of people would say we want it more slack, but remember that's not what this bike is about. This bike is a trail bike for going out for the day, for the weekend, for the week, doing big trips. Having that kind of head angle makes the bike more maneuverable. You can turn a lot easier. It's not designed to be a downhill bike. It doesn't want to be a downhill bike. And I definitely don't want it to be a downhill bike. Moving on to the seat tube, we have got 76 and a half degrees head angle. Now again, that for me is a brilliant, brilliant balance. I don't want to see that any slacker than that that would detract from the pedaling efficiency of this bike. So having that angle as nice and steep gives it all the force driving straight down on the pedals and propelling you forwards. Reach on this bike is 500, but bear in mind it is an XL, so obviously that would change if you drop down a size in frame. However, the bottom bracket height is locked in at 336, which I think is fantastic. It's, I don't pedal strike that often, um, I have longer cranks as well because I like a bit more power, let's say. Uh, so I'm a 170 mil crank set. And for me, that is a really nice balance. I love that. Now you're probably wondering why I've got a beefy set of downhill tires, a Magic Mary on the front and a Tacky Chan on the back. And you would be right, it is a bit odd to put downhill tires, something as heavy duty as those on this kind of bike. But the reason being, we've just got back from filming the top 10 trails in Alicante, and those tires were basically my safety net. So I would actually run a lot lighter weight tire on this bike normally, but some of the trails we were doing, I wanted to ride the whole lot on this bike. So therefore putting on something a bit more beefy gave us security whilst we were doing that film. Um, check it out if you haven't seen it. It's an absolute cracker with some of the most amazing scenery in Alicante. Pressure in the suspension. Now on this bike, I actually run it a little bit stiffer than I would on the rest of my bikes. The reason being is because of the nature of what this bicycle was designed to do. I want to go out on an adventure. I want to go out for the weekend, not worry about running out of juice or all the rest of it. I don't necessarily want to be firing it down downhill tracks and having super supple suspension. So at the front, I run 95 PSI in the fork and at the back, I'm actually at 260 PSI. And bear in mind my weight close to 90 kg plus kit. If that gives you an idea of where we are in terms of setting your Orbea Rise up. If you have any questions regarding my Orbea Rise or your future Orbea Rise, don't be afraid pop a comment in the box below and I will do my utmost to get back to you as fast as I can. Thank you so much for watching. I really do hope this has helped and given you an insight on this unique bicycle and what it's capable of. I look forward to seeing you on the trails with your Orbea Rise very soon. Take it easy, stay safe out there. Happy riding. <laughs>